Washington Conservation Commission meeting um, Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. The time is 6.30 p.m. Up first on the agenda, we have the reorganization of the board. So Paul has left us. Aww. So now we have to reorganize. All right. You're going to ask for a motion? I'll ask for a motion. I'll yes. make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion to appoint Dr. Lynn Mullen as chairman and Alex Bazanson as vice chair. Okay. Second. All right. We'll vote. Okay. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, do you want to sit? No, that's good. We'll, we'll <laughs> next, time. Next, time. next time. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Hopefully I will do as well as Paul did. Okay, next on the agenda, informal discussion regarding the Green Wave Connector Trail Design and Roundabout Project with Benny Hung and Maria George, environmental partners. Which one did you want to discuss first? Uh, we can start with the, uh, the roundabout. The roundabout? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. This is informal, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Hey, good evening. My name is Benny Hung, and she's uh, Maria Gosh. We are from Environmental Partners, and we are hired by the by the DPW for the design of the of the two projects. One is the uh, intersection improvement project at the Hancock Street and Chestnut Street intersections, and the other one is the uh, the Green Wave uh, Trail project. So I'm going to start with the uh, the intersection project first. So the reason for that today is we want to introduce both projects to the Concom and for the for the initial design of the drainage uh, the layout of the uh, intersection project and also for the concept of the uh, uh, Green Wave project. So as far as the uh, intersection. So the project location is at the Hancock Street and Chestnut Street intersections, as you can see from, the, from this plan and also from your plan. So uh, the Hancock Street is coming from north-south directions and Chestnut Street is southwest in that direction. So uh, Hancock Street is a two-way, uh, three uh, directions and then the Chestnut Street is a uh, stop control at the intersections. And and our goal for this project is to improve uh, travel speed in along the intersections, as, 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 as everybody knows. So this one of the this intersection is one of the the most dangerous intersection in town. So that's why we have the um, the town wants to like look into it. And also this project is uh, is going to be funded by uh, Mr. Master, Massachusetts uh, Department of uh, um, Transportation. So what it is is the uh, the town is is doing the uh, paying for the responsible for the design, and then the construction will be paid by the um, by master, and also the master will be oversee <coughs> the over construction as well too. So that means every submission we have to go through master. They're going to be doing the review, provide us comments, and then then go through. So we will have to 25, 75, 100, and final PSME. So we have submitted the 25 percent submission last year. And then right now we are proceeding to the 75% submissions, uh, which is we are submitting to MassDOT about next month. Okay, yep, so as far as the proposed, uh, uh, for this design, we are proposing a run above for these locations in there. So which will be coming, will be try, what we try to do is try to calm traffic, reducing the travel speed when the vehicle coming down into the hill, down to the intersections. So and then so and also we try to improve the sight distance coming down as well too, as you all know the when the when the people driving down to Hancock Street, the so people driving pretty fast on that. So during the rush hour, so this the the, the, the vehicle on along uh, Chestnut Street has a hard time getting through the intersection. So that's why we try to come uh, put out the, our, our our design is going to be a roundabout. So when they come into that, so they'll be slowing down, and also we are. Uh, improving the topography, so to flatten it at the intersections as well. Yep. So this is kind of what it's going to be most like for that. So, just, yeah. so you said you were flattening? Yeah, we have, what we do, we have flattened the intersection 
Okay. And then by, by doing that, we have to kind of cut it uh, along the chest, uh, Hancock Street and then fill up a little bit on the, uh, on the Hancock, on the, uh, the other porch. So which is when you're coming down to the hill, on um, this way, so we are kind of cutting into that and then flatten the intersection. So when they're coming down to the intersection, that will be a plus so flat. So you have a high end of Hancock Street. Yes. And then you have a low end, and you're going to bring them. Yeah, we are going to bring them a little bit. Yeah, how so we're going to cut that. How is that going to affect the store, like the old water store, the country store? Yeah, the country right? store. What we are doing, we are we are proposing a retaining wall along, like about three foot retaining wall along the edge of the on the back. Of the so side. the elevation is only going to be three feet. There? Uh, about two, two and a half feet. About three feet. The maximum is about three feet different between the. For the for at the in front of the convenience store, and then we already have some conversation with the owner of that, and they all are to be okay with the with the designs. Because there's going to be land taking, I'm assuming. Uh, that will be well. Surprisingly, that will be the weather way is pretty far out, so okay. there's no land taking for this project. But it will be some easement. There will be some permit easement for for putting retaining putting the retaining wall or some temperament for doing the grading. Where that country store is though, wasn't there a grindstone there that was historical or something and is that going to be replaced? Or uh, replaced? Yes, that would be, uh, we have been talking to the uh, director for, to, to John, John Stone, so we're going to be re relocating. It's actually a historical stone, so I, I, I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, are, we, are, we are planning to re we are relocate that stones in, in some way into the uh, roundabout. We, we haven't decided where the location is going to be, but yes, that will be I mean, okay. And on the opposite side, on Chestnut Street, in Hancock, you've got a, some properties there that have been notoriously bad with hedges and ones right on the street practically. Yeah, so that one is the, the other thing is that that one because of those hedges is there. That's so that will be like, um, it's got the site distance because it's blocking by the, uh, by, by the hedges. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove those hedges in there. Uh, and that will be improving the site distance along, along, along all directions. So there's going to have to be a uh, retaining wall along well, there too. Yeah, the re well, that one, because the way is kind of, because as you know, the, the house is kind of high up. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really have to do a retaining wall at that location. We can kind of grade it because by the time we get to the back of the sidewalk, we can kind of grade it up. So it will be actually be kind of more flatter than what it is right now. Can you I talk mean, a little bit? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, can you talk a little bit about the wetlands that are be, will be affected by this project? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. So, yeah, I can, I can have her talk about more like a drainage model. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, drainage so then he went over, uh, in general, the traffic improvements. Um, and so, with the roundabout change, uh, in, in general, the uh, ro the edges of the road are moving out. We're, we're adding impervious area. We are relocating catch basins and having to reconnect into the existing drainage system. Um, uh, so, uh, so for this view that you have, um, it's it's the same view as before, uh, except north is now to the right. Yeah. Um, so now we have uh, Hancock Street is left right, and Chest Chestnut Street is up down. Um, so in this intersection, we um, just. Uh, just towards the edges, um, we have an unnamed uh, uh, stream that flows. I'm sorry? I see the stream. I, that was one of my questions because yep. I'm looking at it because there's no drainage currently in that stream, but you're proposing to put the drainage in the stream? So, uh, so, th so there are three different culverts. Um, there's one culvert that's. Um, on the uh, sorry, the eastern side of Chestnut Street, one culvert towards um, the the north north of uh, Hancock, and then one that's outside of this page uh, that's west on on Chestnut Street. So we'll be con connecting into the existing pipes that are in the roadway, and those pipes are connected to outfalls. Um, that discharge to this uh, intermittent stream. Um, so in initially, we were discuss. We didn't um, actually this morning with the town. We uh, we did a CCTV investigation um, to verify where pipes are, um, and we were able to confirm that there are uh, for. Sorry. Um, 
Yep. For for the northern end of Hancock Street. Can the, you show oh. me on this though? Because I'm not seeing where there's existing drainage up here. I mean, I'm following your your key here. So you're saying the dotted line is the existing drainage, and here's the proposed new drainage. And I don't see any dotted lines up here. E yeah. So j I just I figured I should answer into the mic. Um, so we so the existing drainage we didn't re uh, realize until this morning. Um, that it was connected into the culvert. Our initial design, when we didn't realize there was a pipe connecting to the culvert, was we thought that we would have to make a new outfall. But because there's an existing pipe in the roadway, we won't have to, uh, we'll be able to add a manhole to that existing pipe and avoid any direct disturbance to the wetland res resource areas. We're going to be within the 100 foot wetland buffer zone, uh, but we'll, um, si since we were able to confirm uh, those pipe locations, um, we can send you an updated figure uh, with the revised uh, existing pipe locations. Uh, since we were able to confirm that, um, we're able to keep all of the disturbance in the roadway, in, in the, <coughs> uh, uh, out of the resource area. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of, so can I think like this is like uh, the last one too, but this is kind of where the, the existing, the, the orange line is where the existing drain pipe is, and then this is where the cold, uh, this is the cold. Yeah, so this is the culvert. So there's existing 15 inch pipe connecting directly to the culvert. Yeah. Yeah, so we just, yeah, we just like what Maria, we just have a, I have to give you that, like, I do a CCTV to confirm that I was there, so that's why I can I have a chance to send you that plans. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the existing pipe connecting to the culvert. So this is where we, all the proposed drainage will be tiny to mm -hmm. this existing 15 inch pipe instead of a new, uh, new discharge location into the stream. Okay. So, um, but this is not just, this is a river, right? The stream, perennial stream? Um, I've. I don't recall if it's uh, perennial. I'd have to check on that. Um, I'd have to check our wetland report. I'm sorry, I don't have that answer. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask is because that makes a big difference into what can or cannot be done. Because mm -hmm. if you just have like an intermittent stream, then you have a hundred foot buffer. But when you have a perennial stream, then you're running into a riverfront zone, which mm -hmm. itself is a resource area. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you do within that 200 foot yep. um, can be limited by mm. the state. So it'd be good mm -hmm. to know what that was and to figure out like how much of that area has already been degraded mm -hmm. and how much additional degradation is proposed in terms of like square footage, where is it gonna be, that sort of thing. Yep. Okay, yeah, we can, con we can confirm that and uh, follow up with you on that. Um, but as, as for the other uh, drainage improvements, so in general, it's just uh, shifting catch basin locations to the edge of the um, revised roadway layout and then having to tie the drainage uh, back into the existing pipes. Um, so uh, part of our uh, research into um, the uh, stormwater standards is going to be exploring what sort of uh, treatments uh, we can fit, uh, as well as if there's any room for infiltration as well. Um, but that's an ongoing uh, on ongoing design. Um, but that's just one of the things that we're looking into. Yeah, mm -hmm. only because of the stream and the wetlands around that area, that is a concern. Yep. Um, so what is the width of this? I, there's, so, there's so much on here for the run. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you show me where the width is. No, I can't. Uh, I'm like, I, it doesn't give me any idea of how wide or whatever. Yeah, so I thought that the rock about itself. Yeah. yeah so, I'm, so I just did want to kind of print, pick up some of the layers and it is like when before it comes in. So I start the, so the, okay, so this is the side, so this is the Hank, uh, Hancock Street. Right. So we are putting a sidewalk along both on, along the edge of Pope uh, or one one about and then the size of the from curb to curb is about hundred about hundred and ten feet. From curb to curb? Yeah, hundred and ten curb. So, so from here from the curb to curb about hundred and ten feet. Yeah. And then and then we have about eighteen foot 
uh, roadway, and then this, and then the big the outer circle is the uh, is a truck apron. So only using when there's a, a a large vehicle when they're making a turn, or like a tractor trailer, they have to use that. And other than that, so this would be a, a regular asphalt. And then as far as the truck payments, it should be like a uh, stand concrete. So it will be denoted differently. And also there will be a little multiple curb along that to deter uh, to so that so the vehicle it won't be dried up on the uh, on the roundabout. On the curb. And what's the current width for those roads now? They're going to go to 18 feet. You're saying? Uh, well, as far as you know, so as uh, for the roundabout, it's so for the roundabout for direction. entering. Okay, I yeah, got so it. I got it. So the, the vehicle will be entering into roundabout into one direction. So I think we're one direction. So the roundabout and in, in and out. So everybody, when the when the vehicle comes in, so the only thing they have to look into is just one direction instead of looking in different directions. So when the people come into here, so they and uh, they have to right away at the, the rear vehicle in the roundabout itself. Okay. So I mean, so that in, in that case will be slowing down the traffic a lot more and also providing a shorter crossing distance for pedestrians, so to be more safer. And there's going to be sidewalks on both sides? Yeah, yeah. so all these things will be sidewalk along all sides of the uh, roundabout. Yeah, because existing currently, so there's a sidewalk along the, uh, the, the convenience store and also along the Chestnut Street. Chestnut Street. So there's, only, uh, there's no sidewalk in, in here. There's no sidewalk. No sidewalk on here? On Chestnut. On Chestnut. On Chestnut. Yeah. Yeah, so hand, so hand caution, there's no sidewalk on the western side of that. Yeah. So there's no sidewalk in this side. There's, there's existing sidewalk along here. As far as the existing crosswalk, there's only one crossing chestnut and also one crossing uh, Hancock. And then we are proposing all Lake has a crosswalk to there with a shorter distance in it. There's a meet that's split island in between. So when the pedestrian come crossing, they only have to look at one direction of traffic instead of looking both. So they have a very field area in the middle on the still island, so when they get to here, they look at another opposite traffic. Mm -hmm. So the only thing they would look at just one direction of traffic, so we make it more safer for players to get uh, crossing, the, uh, crossing the road. Same thing for the vehicle, so they don't have to come in here looking at one direction of that, instead of looking at both directions coming in and out. Yeah, and also they should be coming back because of the split island, so that the vehicle coming into the cross, uh, the, into the roundabout should be a lot more slower speed on that. And so right now it's like people like flying down the hill and that, so that's why, that's why it would be like, try to improve that as well. Yeah, yeah. I like what you, a lot of uh, Malaysia, so we are, as part of the journey, we try to be uh, maintaining the existing drainage system. Only thing we're adding would be like cash basing, like what we showed there, that when we need the edge of payment, or the new edge of payment. Yeah. And then let the audit system would connect to the existing yeah. uh, drain. On the catch basin, it would be nice to see some sort of filtration system, only because where it's feeding into the wetlands through that yeah, stream. So, so we all going to have like a dish, like four foot dish on for each of the catch basin. And yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No. Anything else from the board? Nope. Okay. No more questions? Okay. Yeah, so our next approach will be some, uh, preparing a, uh, a draft NOI submissions and also a stormwater report to MassDOT okay. for, for their review. And then once we get a comment from them, and then we'll uh, submit a final for, for, for the contract to review and so the next, uh, so the formal will be between 75 for the next submissions, mm -hmm. which is something that maybe I would say about spring. I expect that we should have something like send it to come to you guys to review it for the for the here for final design. Okay, great. So at that point, is that where you'll tell us about the square footage of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But in between that time, we can kind of get one well, sure. we can get it to you. Yeah, we just wanted to review the initial concepts today, yeah. um, and then we'll have the full application yeah, um, after after Mass DOT has been able to review it. Okay. Mm -hmm. When do you anticipate that would be? Uh, you, well, we are submitting these uh, in mid August, so most likely they will be built after that. So we should have here that some comments from them by like October or so. But we should have some comments for that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. 
So that is something that in between we can kind of submit you as well. So I select a draft, uh, mm -hmm. it will be in the show. Then that will be everybody as we get what we propose in there. Any questions from the public? Comments? Okay, bringing it back to the board. Yeah. Any further questions about Not it? Not on that. No, I think we'll just wait on the um, back to all plans. Okay. Thank Sounds you good. very much for the information. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the other project is the uh, Green Wave uh, Trail Project. So uh, this one is not, is very in the early stage that we're doing right now, and the, the purpose of that is to we, we try to connect uh, the town hall and to, uh, with the, to the board, uh, the, uh, the board metal lane. So there will be uh, some access from here for the board metal lane to get access to the town hall and then to the, um, the share use path and also the, all the ball field. So this is the, uh, the, the idea behind that, that we want to have that. So we are propose, proposing a uh, trail path, like an asphalt trail path, through this wooded area. And, the, and then that would be, the trail path is about 10 feet wide, or at grade. So the way that you show on the plan, so you can see like a little two, that two dollar line on the plan, this is where the location of the, uh, of the possible location of the trail. And then the heavy line on the outside is where we think will be the, the edge of grading that we need to meet existing. This trail follows the, correct me if I'm wrong, but the sewer line that connected yeah. the neighborhoods. Yeah. It, so yeah. it's pre-existing. So I guess I'm wondering what it is you're proposing to do for the trail. Uh, yeah, so it's a so it's an existing maintenance path from satellite view. You can see like a little split in the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, in terms of resource area, um, the area all around it um, for the most part is wetlands. We have, um, we have uh, wetlands on both the, the, the west and east of the trail, a drier area in the center. Um, and then we also have water um, that's moving through shallow intermittent channels um, across this path um, at uh, the three different locations shown in darker blue. Um, so currently uh, it's just uh, a footpath where uh, there's um, uh, basically drain water running across uh, in almost stagnant um, in some areas um, and so what we're looking at is uh, making an accessible path um, as Benny said about 10 feet wide that would be able to uh, be ADA accessible and be able to be traversable by everyone to make uh, this um, uh, to, to make this building and, and the library uh, more accessible to um, the other neighborhood and so it's more walkable. Um, Jump in? Yep. Okay. Um, this is part of the town manager's, part of his overall go goal of expanding connectivity around town and this actually connects, will connect Broadmeadow and at that point later in the future we hope to, with signage and maybe some work on Hancock Street but that's very far down the future, create a bike path and a pathway to Ames Noel. Um, this also comes back and it connects to the bike path down here which ends up at Washington Street and we've just redone, um, Johnstone redid the um, way in front of the Frolio and I think there's a bike path going in there if it's not already there. So this is sort of helping us to connect all of those paths together. Um, this is the design phase. Um, we really got held up in the design process with the wetlands because there was, there was more than we thought, like it has really all overgrown back there. Um, so this is being paid for with a um, grant from DCR and some CPA funding. Um, so that's the intent of that and eventually we would like, um, CPA also asked us to include a couple of parking spots right there so people could um, maybe drive there and then walk their kids to school or walk down to the playing fields or the summer concert um, series. So we'll see how that goes. They're going to try to look at putting a couple of spaces there. Um, 
So that is the intent and that's why we're doing this right now is to start connecting these recreational areas and these green space areas around town. Right. It's not just a path. In the What's woods. going to be on the ground? It's just like a, asphalt. Uh, asphalt. Asphalt paved. Oh, okay. uh, paved. Would be like, like what you said, would be ac uh, AD accessible. Okay. So people can like ride a bike, walk around, walk through it. So it's not like a dirt path. Um, an asphalt surface would is impervious and that's a giant wetland area so my concerns are you're splitting a wetland in two yep yeah, so um, we're so with the um, our the existing channels uh, we would have uh, piped crossings uh, we're still exploring sizes and configurations but we just have a preliminary idea here of possibly if we were to have a three foot tall pipe how high the road would have to be um, in order to cross it, I, I mean path, and then um, grading back down to uh, uh, existing grade uh, is the extent of that uh, blue footprint that's showing on the plan. Um, so that's just a preliminary, um, uh, a preliminary layout uh, for, uh, for putting this together. We tried to look into whether or not there was an existing order of conditions uh, that had been put together for the sewer um, and whether or not um, that would have been uh, uh, whether the classification of the um, the wetland area had changed from the the sewer construction but we weren't able to find that um, and so our wetland scientists with how it's been overgrown um, they've flagged uh, the wetland areas through the path so conservatively we're looking at this as um, even though it's an existing footpath, we're looking at it as wetland area that needs to be Well, yeah, replicated. based on what you just said, I mean, yeah. the dirt path that's there has been inundated with water. And so my thought is, if you take it and you blacktop, now you're creating two separate wetlands. How's that going to affect the people in that area? Is that going to back water up into there? Do you know what I'm saying? Wetlands, yeah. water has to go somewhere. Yep. Apparently it's flowing across that mm -hmm. path. Yep. So um, the re uh, so overall picture is we have uh, uphill towards the north. Yep. Um, uh, we have water generally flowing down, and then it wraps back around um, to the drainage system under this parking lot. Um, so it kind of crosses the path um, in in multiple locations, which is why we have these three different areas where we have the existing. Uh, water uh where, where the water is currently uh crossing the path and we would leave um culvert crossings at these locations um and so this is all preliminary we just put together um a initial sizing um i still need still need to uh look through um the design on that and um but we just wanted to look at this at a high level conceptually about um, whether or not this would be feasible. So um, in, with regards to the wetland resource area disturbance, um, we would have to replicate that uh, in another location. And what we're considering, um, uh, which again, preliminary design, we, we still need to look into where this, uh, more, more details, but we were looking into the, um, the athletic field uh, that is bordering the wetland area and perhaps taking a, a strip of grass parallel um, to the forest. So you're impacting the square footage for the area, the BBW that's being impacted. Is that your figure down here, 18,000? Uh, yeah, so, so that number is um, the total teal blue area. Um, so the entire disturbance to the wetland is 18,000 square feet, or are you showing like, like the actual impervious surface? How much? Oh, is that oh, that's mean? not. Um, so that that's the whole blue area. Um, the uh, it's it's a little bit harder to see, but the dashed lines that run through the center of that that's the edge of the 10 foot wide path. So we have the 10 foot wide path, and then it has to. Uh, um, go back down to existing grade. So it's a raised area. Um, and so the blue area is wider than the actual 
in but, Pervious. But you're still doing work within the blue area, yes. right? It's yes. not. Okay, so how much of that is going to be, do you have an estimate of how much square footage that you're working in? Uh, that you're actually going to have work and then the asphalt as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't grab that number for the disturbance in the non-wetland area, um, I, I, but uh, I, I can give you a, a ballpark number. Um, so for impervious area, it would, it would be um, uh, about 1,300 square feet. So um, about um, 100, Oh. So it's about 130 feet long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I'm making a math mistake trying to do this off the cuff. <laughs> no worries. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, this is an informal meeting, but these yep. are the types of questions we're going to be coming up with. I mean, my biggest concern, again, is when you make an impervious surface go between a wetland, now you've mm -hmm. created two wetlands. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I know that you do have some culverts there. Mm -hmm. However, the culverts, in addition to the culverts that are there, you've got the water that's currently flowing over the top. So uh, you say that there was standing water on the dirt path from the sewer line. So uh, that was my concern. Mm -hmm. The reason it's important to know the exact square footage is because if you get up to 5,000 square feet, it becomes a limited project, and then it starts to get more challenging because mm -hmm. you have to go uh, Army, Corps of, Army Corps of Engineers, get clean water certifications, yeah. and that can take a year or two. Um, so it, it would be good to know how much impervious surface. And then okay. second, I would ask about, I know there's different types of surfaces that you can do. Some of it can really drain very well. I'm not very good at this, but... Um, you know, we could talk about yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rather than asphalt, right? Because ADA compliant, I'm sure, it doesn't always just have to be asphalt. Because ADA, I mean, they travel in the cities and everything mm -hmm. else, and there's not always asphalt there. So a little something, a little more eco friendly for yeah. a wetland. I mean, you might want to consider yeah. some options yeah, there. I think we can look into the progress payment on it. We I mean, go back to the side. The progress payment has to be maintained. Regularly, so otherwise, uh, when once the block is to, to leave block in there, so it might not be as efficient as what's, what it's supposed to be. Uh, just like a no maintenance for that. But yeah, definitely we can look into that. Yeah. But if you look at New York City and Central Park and everything where they have a lot yeah. of, I mean, they use bricks and mm -hmm. they stagger them and it's still ADA compliant. Yeah. I'm just throwing out. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, asphalt's the cheapest and the fastest, I get it, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can look into the material, something that we can reduce it or make more, more you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Where's the AC? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Josh, John. <laughs> it's got just only it's scheduled for September. Josh and John, do you have any questions? Um, I have a question. So the the teal ends for a little while and picks back up again. So what what's the difference between the teal and that spot and the? Yep. Um, so uh, the center of the path where the, where it isn't colored, yep. uh, that's a more elevated area. It, okay. it was dry. It didn't have any indicator oh, species okay. for wetland. Um, so it's it's a little bit harder to see on the colored image. But we have. Um, blue lines uh, that follow the uh, wetland flagging okay. that was completed. Um, so it's just not, it's not wetland. Correct. So, yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Who did the flagging? Uh, LEC. I forget what they stand oh, for. Oh, LEC. We're familiar with them. Okay. I don't have any other questions. When do you anticipate coming before us with the filing for this? I'm not sure. Uh, that one, I think, yeah. So once we get more further along, then we can get, get back to you on this one, yeah. So Liz, what do you think of the time day. frame? So this is, um, I actually just had to finish the paperwork for the grant. Um, so uh, my hope is this is sort of the initial design and they wanted to get your feedback. Um, 
and then that will guide the final design. And then after they come back and we do all of that, they'll do the bid docs and, um, you know, wrap it up. So my hope is within the next six months, this will be wrapped up. Um, yeah. did, it really did take a lot longer to flag it than we anticipated. Um, it's a big area. It is, and, we, and, and I think it was a lot more wetlands than anybody thought because the <laughs> sewer line was there and it looks so pretty when you see a nice overview. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's nothing there, but yeah, there was a lot there. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that within the next six months, yeah. um, they have finished the design, come back to you guys, presented it, and then um, we can get ready to roll. Do you know who the wetland scientist was for Mallie see who did that? I don't. Okay. Yeah, we can give you the information. Yeah. 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 And you said you couldn't find a filing for when the sewer department did uh, this? So we, we were just looking at the uh, registry of deeds online. I sent them some stuff. I think it was oh. Yeah, so I know, I know you guys weren't working on this. It was okay. Margo and yep. Jim Fitzgerald. That's part of this, too, is that uh, I've been working with somebody before. else. But no, I did send it to them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I, worked, I sent them whatever Oh, had. Oh, but I mean yeah. the filing. Yeah, so the filing, 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 filing yeah, yeah. The filing that was in that we the 90s. So found, yeah. Um, did go to the. Um, okay, so, so there was a filing. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago, too. Right. I think some of it. I think some of it was helpful, and but yeah. it was a long time ago. But so. there was a filing for the suit. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There absolutely okay. was. To Tony was kind enough to pull those for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? <clears throat> no. Okay. Um, any questions from the public? No. Okay. Bringing it back to the board again. All set. Thank you. All set. I guess. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you guys for sliding us in. Oh sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next up on the agenda. Next up on the agenda, we have Anrad Zero Shaw Avenue, filed by Manny Ramos, Shaw Avenue Realty Partners LLC. We have anybody representing them? I don't see them. I haven't heard anything from anybody about it. Um, do we want to discuss the sidewalk? We might as well, since yeah. it's on the agenda. But yeah, that's Ken Thompson, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had the site walk with Ken Thompson, so. And he knew about tonight? It's on the agenda. Yeah. We continued it to this hearing. Okay. Um, anybody want to discuss? Well, I kind of stayed back because I didn't have much, I didn't have my boots mm -hmm. on, so. Yeah, so when we went through there, um, I think what we saw was there's a new development there on Robert English Way. They created a new culvert to replace or augment the existing one that was kind of already carving a path and it was pretty clearly laid out where the water was going. And now the new culvert uh, is diverting water basically right across the whole property wow. in, a, in a kind of a really wide uh, path. And it goes over an area where they're hoping to put a driveway. Um, and so that's, I guess, the the issue there is, and, and I think there there isn't an easement on the property for drainage uh, mm -hmm. water. So um, I guess that's the issue, right? So we, we got some pictures of it um, and uh, it does seem like it's causing some damage there on the property. So Robert English yep. is dumping water on the other onto person. the property yeah yes. yep yeah he said that there was an area where it used to be water would come down be six foot six feet wide and it's now 60. and, and i think it was pretty dramatic yeah you can see where it was it was definitely carving a new path yeah. for was sure. it 60 feet wide like he said i mean i don't know how to estimate it it was maybe at least 30 it was wide for sure yeah. you could yeah. see it was it went from a little six foot yeah because you could see where the old stream bed was and now kind of where the new piece of it is yeah it's definitely much much wider than it was before um i think what so else? what's the um so robert english the the developer is should be fixing this somehow right they Ken Thompson said that the person who owns Zero Shaw's got a lawyer involved 
was trying to contact the people Robert English way who refused to talk to them. Well, he refused to talk to Ken Thompson when he walked out of this meeting at the last time. That's right. And he mentioned that yeah. at the site walk. He also mentioned that the flagging was incredibly difficult because you would see, oh, um, here's a wetland indicator plant, but the soil is dry or vice versa. And I think it's that that sounds like it's been fairly recent in terms of you have red maples that are been living in a certain area and all of a sudden you're rapidly changing the flow of water that's going to start killing things off and that's what he's noticed yeah. so if they want it's a huge property if they're here and they want an anrad then we should think about a peer review mm -hmm. To check the wetlands line, but I'm surprised. I don't know if that's what tonight. they want. I, I'm surprised he's not here too. I mean, that's what an ANRAD is. We just we can yeah. either approve what he has flagged, or we have it peer reviewed and they recheck it. But I mean, his issue seems to be with Robert English Way. And when I stayed back while you mm -hmm. three walked yeah. out there, I was standing up by the road, and on the edge of Robert English Way. The silt fence that was erected for the roadway, I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is, has all been tamped down. And there's, um, what do you call those things they use when they blast for? That's just like oh, right glad the of the mats. Yeah, see it? Like, those have been there for years, though. Have they been yeah, there for years? they've been there for okay. a long time since I, I just saw there. it and I'm like, I don't know who's doing the development and if it was current or not, but that's, yeah. you know some of the things i mean you can't even see the silt fence in some places there's also a dep sign down there too i don't know what their situation is but the house there's a number on the house yeah, yeah there's a number for the a dep uh issue or yeah well as far as the anrad goes i would think that we need to peer review it it's a big piece of property. John, do well, you have any? Kenny suggested that too, right, when we were there? Yeah, yeah he said he was fine yeah. with that, but I'd <coughs> like him to be here because that involves money. Yeah, I think we should... Uh, we want to reschedule it to the... I'd move to... Uh, be nice to have him pick, and have uh, up and, like, hear from him. Definitely. Continue yeah. this to the next meeting. Right. Make sure he's here so we can discuss that. John, is there anything else? Because you were at the site walk. Is there anything that we missed? Uh, no, I, I think you guys covered everything. Like I said, I know it's like, I'm not sure if you said 30, 60, but it was definitely yeah, definitely a lot more. It's, it's kind of hard to tell, but it was yep. definitely at least 30. Yep. Um, and like I said, it would be nice to have a um, gentleman here just to discuss it. I, I know once you get the lawyers involved, that's going to kind of stalemate everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, good, it's, it's just going to cost them a lot more money, obviously. So um, it would be interesting to see. But I, I do agree here with the uh, peer review. Okay. So where is the pipe? Like over here, going that way. Um, here's like I don't even know where you orient me here. Where is it? All right, this is McHugh, right. and well, Shaw would be over oh, here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here on the side of the roadway, yeah. there was some pipes here, and that's there was, the old pipe. Right. Mm -hmm. There's the old pipe here sticking out of the ground, and then there's um the. It's a big wide culvert. The here. black silt fence, and then that big rubber stuff there it's sitting all on the top there's pictures of it that were printed that I had here earlier oh yeah yeah i didn't bring I my I files yeah where did those pictures go mm -hmm. i just had them yeah so did they end up? i mean we just gave him a partial uh certificate of compliance so we could sell one lot correct yep I think we um, need to talk to him also and uh, not issue any more until some of these things are corrected. I agree with you. Okay. I don't know. I think this is the pipe that Ken said was originally. There was some sort of culvert across the street and it ran under the street and it drained. And then it's just sitting there up at mm -hmm. the top of the hill. Right. How many lots did we release? Just the one? I believe. We had the one at 10 McHugh Circle. 
And then zero shot. And then the new one, yeah. On oh, Robert English Way. Robert English mm -hmm. Way. Was it five Robert English Way? It's five. Um, we approved a couple more recently, but those We not. approved them, but we didn't issue a certificate of compliance. Correct. Yeah. There's no certificate of compliance for any of that. Um, I think we approved the houses. Not all the houses have been built. Yeah, so I think we need to um, get him back in here also and find out what's going on with that drainage. Okay. So a letter to the developer? I mean, he can't be dumping it on someone else's property. Mm -hmm. But is... That's a stormwater thing, though, right? Right, yeah. So maybe... Planning, planning board. Planning. Yeah. And the planning board has a bond, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I think the thing to do is... Well, I think maybe we should talk with planning first because it might not be an issue for us. It could be yeah. for them. On the I think the only thing is if they have a formal ANRAD, then we have to figure out right. yeah. what to do about that. So we can ask Ken, hey, are you going to come in? Yeah, we, want, we want Ken here in order to do that. Okay. So I did make a motion to continue that to the next meeting. Second. Okay. July 23rd. July 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, before we do that, though, um, any comments, questions from the audience, members of the public? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. You want to get to the podium and oh. right, say your name and address, please? My name is Maureen Geddes, 30 Grants Place. And I was just concerned about the houses you were just talking about because he's redirecting the water, and we live like next door. So we're concerned about all the water, mm -hmm. the new houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we are too, and that's why we're yeah. gonna call them in here to find out what's going on. Okay, where are the other houses that you allowed them to build? I think are they all by Robert they're English? Farther they're farther. Yeah, all Robert English, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, far, they're farther away from you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're yeah down the road and then like a cul-de-sac, cul-de-sac okay. <clears throat> down there. All right. Yeah. We'll come to the next one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else from uh, members of the audience, public? No. Okay. Bringing it back. Motion was made and seconded. Motion is seconded to defer this to the twenty-third, twenty-third of July. Okay. And have the developer come in, Robert. And have the developer come in. And Ken Thompson. Right? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Take a vote. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. All right. Next up on the agenda, I gotta get my phone out. We have updated enforcement order on 60 Berry Road, Ribeiro Davani Pinto. Um, so. I believe the translation I put today. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I, I found yeah. out that we could actually have a translation service that we can call. Oh, okay. And they'll oh. be on the phone. So yeah, she had a friend of us anyway. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Appreciate it. Do you want a microphone? Good evening. Yeah, Would you like to over to this microphone? We can bring the microphone down to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm loud. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just for the members of the audience oh, you, you for the video. Yourself. All right. My name is Fernanda Menon. I'm just from some family. Um, the question is why they need to, um, what, why they have to do the pond again if yes. it's all made? Uh, like he, it was it's a homemade he like he cleaned everything it was not a pond before um it was just like it was smelled really bad it was just dirty water in there it was just really dirty it was not a pond the owners before um 
he he made a hole, like he digged a hole in the ground to put water in it to feed um, his his um, what's the? He made a canal for PVC, pushing the the water down. PVC pipe. Put the pipe. Yeah, the pipe. To yeah to yeah. Sure. Sure. He's the neighbor. You have to come up and speak, say your name and address, and speak into the microphone. My name is Ken Curran. And only one person at a time, please. My name is Ken Curran. I live at 43 Barry Road. I've been there 53 years. I'm diagonally across from. Jerry, I'll call him, as we know him. And what they're trying to say is, Jerry, when Jerry moved there, as it, it's not a pond as a layman would know it. What he had done is he dug out a, we'll call it a trench. It, I'm going to say it was that deep, it's maybe three feet, and a slot wide, probably eight, eight feet wide. And he got the water from the, I'll call it a brook, I don't know what it's called, a creek. All right, yeah. and um, the the point they're trying to make is, it it really isn't a pond as you know it's not self-fed, and it'd be as a matter of fact it'd be dry right now, because the little river or creek, that's dried up, and it'll be dry for another four months, and that, it lasted. That stream is dry right now. That stream, that little, yeah, and it'll, behind the house where the bridges are and yeah, everything. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, when I say dry, you, you know, you maybe have an inch of water, maybe. But I yeah. walk it every day, been there 53 years. But the point they're trying to make is it, it, it wasn't a pond. It wasn't being self-fed. And um, me as a neighbor, I'm, I'm up there, so it doesn't matter. But it was, a, it was a mosquito pit. It wasn't something environmentally nice. It wasn't environmentally needed i i understand the environment so i'm not picking on it i'm just saying it was it was a man-made thing it, it wasn't you're saying jerry dug that out yeah well yeah well yeah that was taken out when oh way back probably 50 years ago 50 you know that was and uh, okay jerry was a nice guy i'm not finding a fault but it was just it was a man-made thing so i want you to know that it wasn't it's it wasn't a pond as you would know and I know. No, I'm very familiar with it because Jerry was a very close friend of yeah, mine. Yeah, Jerry's a great guy. So and, um, um, I was there a lot, and it was a little more than this wide. Um, no, no, I, no, it was probably five, six feet wide and yeah, when we, it got water. Yeah, yeah. You know. and it was connected to the, the stream, and that's how it got the water. That's what I'm saying. It's that's right. Stream fed. And that's why there's an issue now, because it was connected to the stream. But okay, I just wanted you to know it's, it was piped to the stream. It wasn't, you know, a natural thing. And mm -hmm. um, I'm not familiar with the neighborhood all that much. I do. Back in the '60s, I knew somebody who lived in that neighborhood. Um, but aside from that, the DEP adopted Mass General Law protecting waterways in 1972. Okay, and that is the current laws that we have sitting on the Massachusetts general laws, 310 CMR. And it is, you do not disturb a perennial stream. A creek, even if it has an inch of water in it, and we've been dry for how long now? It's been hot and dry. That is considered perennial, even if there's just a trickle of water I'm, running. I'm, okay, I'm just um, trying to- Perennial just... streams are protected as well as intermittent, but it's just that you don't go digging and working in those areas. Yeah, but no, um, I, I'm, I'm just trying to describe it to you. That's yeah, all. And, I, it, and, and I'm trying to give you the background yeah, of where we're coming from. Yeah, and the only other thing is I'd say is the way you just describe it, that was not a moving stream. Whatever Jerry got stayed there. It wasn't something No, that, I, I'm talking about the one that goes around. Oh, yeah, the no, no, when it goes saw. by, yes. Yeah, okay. and I mean, if he tapped into it, I don't know, yeah. but I'm just saying, regardless, when the DEP laws went into effect in 1972, it's like you don't disturb waterways or any area around a waterway. You know, Jerry did it in the 60s. We can't do anything about that. Yeah. But going forward, which is where we are now, is you can't just, oh, I don't like this, so I'm going to fill it in, it's a mosquito pit. You know, that's what happens when you have streams, wetlands, 
bogs, marshes, yeah. they're all, but they all serve a purpose. I, and that's yeah. all I'm just trying to explain. And I thank time. you, I do, because I know nothing yeah. really about that area. I thank you. So anything done within 200 feet of that stream has to go through conservation. Yes. And that's not our rules. That's the state rules. But so the, the one that spilled the water, they, they spilled the, the one, that's the big one, no, the, the long one, still there. No, I understand that. But if you do any work within 200 feet of that, you need to file with the Conservation Commission. And that wasn't done in... He said he didn't know that. And now it's a... No, I know, I know you didn't know right. that. Lots of people don't know that. A lot of people, either. a lot of people don't realize it you either. Because he works with that, he just like, because it was smelling really bad. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of mosquitoes and like, it was, it was just really bad. Um, yeah. Dirty and then, and then he was just like, I'm going to clean it. And he just cleaned everything up and there was the water in it. And he doesn't he doesn't want to build anything. It's just like a clean like, place, and then he leaves his truck, like his work truck, there. Like um, it's just like a plane. But you know, even putting the fence up, it has to go through our board in order to do anything within two hundred feet. Okay. He just put the fence because the, the kids from school. No, I, I understand that, but this isn't our rules. Yeah. This, oh, these are yeah, state yeah. rules that we have to enforce. And yeah, and they can't afford um, to pay a professional to do whatever, like to dig again the, the place and just cost a lot of money. And, well, I think you're going to need to hire a professional engineer to review the situation and come to us with the plan. Okay. Um, all right. You mean like a wetland scientist? Yeah. 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 So you guys want like he has to make the pond again? It's which is not was not a pond. Um, the neighbor said he had he had animals, um, um, sheep, mm -hmm. goats, and goats. goats. Um, he did that hold filled water just to to get to so the goats can drink water. So it's it was not a pond. Like it was just like. I'm old of water and I got old and you know just get um, smelling that and it was just was uncomfortable for them. Is it possible that that sorry I mean interrupt? Is it possible that a wetland scientist might just say to plant some vegetation there as opposed to digging it back out? Or that's why I think they should hire. Some. Okay, so it might not be that you have to put the pond or you know pond back. It might just be you have to plant, you know. The appropriate vegetation for the area and oh, for the. Oh, that this concrete and then. That's correct. Just like that. Yeah. Meaning that have to be yeah. vision testing. I think that's where if you hire a wetland scientist, mm -hmm. they will know the laws really well about this is you know anything within two hundred feet is considered to be like a wetland, not just the river or stream, but everything outside of it. In highly protected areas. You'll have to come up and state your name and address. Hi, I'm Donna O'Sullivan from 63 Barry Road. I live directly across from Dave and Danny. The thing that you're talking about is a pit, an eyesore, a mess. Before he moved there, there was another family that lived there. And it became overgrown, it got filled with junk. It was awful. When he came, he cleared it all out. Jerry, God love him, passed away. His son lived there. His son did nothing, okay? The fence that was around that little, whatever you want to call it, okay? I went over with another neighbor and was banging it back up there. And Jerry had told me he also put the goat in there because he got a rebate on his taxes for farming. No, he didn't. 
That's what he told me. Well, it, that's not how the laws work, so he didn't. And I know Jerry very well because I gave him those votes. <laughs> so, well, then he got more afterwards, too, because those went soon. I gave him four goats over yeah. the time he was there. But anyway, it doesn't matter what was there or what was done. Any work done within 200 feet of that stream needs to be... So can I ask you, how do you know when you have to do that? Um, when One at a time, please. How do you know that? When you go and look at... Um, a tool we use to look at an area when somebody files a complaint, we will go and we'll look up the address on Mass Mapper. On Mass Mapper, it identifies DEP wetlands, general, rivers and streams, and it also gives you images that go back to 1999. So you can see progression and changes over the course of many years, just like Google Earth does if you use Google Earth. You can see historical changes to property. So how would you know that you're supposed to do that if you wouldn't be? Like, uh, again, you I'm know. I'm just saying. I'm just asking because. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's an that's too. an issue for a lot of people. They don't understand it's, that. It's I'm my not land. To be I, I know. I know. We know that, but it's just that conservation commissions across the state deal with the same issue. Yes, and I know if it's it's made, you have to leave it there, and all, even if it's man-made, you're supposed to leave it there and everything. But it was yeah. like, he's new. I have another new neighbor there. None of them know any of this. So, I mean, I'm just saying, maybe it's something you can bring up at one of your meetings and say, you know, you got to let people know. Do we need more PSA publics? Yes, we do. You know, I'm just saying. I agree with you 100%. No, and, and that, that, that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, we're only here to enforce the state regulations. You know, did. we didn't make these laws. Yeah. But each town has to have a conservation commission to enforce those laws. And um, unfortunately, that's us <laughs> right yeah. now. But, um, and we're I, all volunteers. And we're, yeah, and we're all volunteers. I appreciate it. Just yeah. Hi, um, so I'm Elizabeth Casey from 55 Barry. I live across from Danny and David as well. Okay. Um, so just so I'm clear on this, someone must, someone filed a complaint and that's why there's a problem? Yep. Is there, is it, I'm, I'm not asking who filed, but is there, what was the like nature of the complaint? Because in the previous discussion that, it, I think I understood it sounded like water was being flooded from one person's property to another. No, no, was a no, 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 no it's not it was at all. Just a complaint. No, right on. So what was somebody, the complaint? Somebody like, reached out to me and said the pond at Jerry Cochran's house was filled in. So they were mad about we, sentimental? Like, no, no, it's just... You can't uh, bring fill in and fill in a wet area. No, I understand that. I guess I'm just, I, I guess what is upsetting to me, and I think the other neighbors on our street, is that... It doesn't seem that harm, I, I, I appreciate the law, so I, I'm not um, con contradicting the law, but it doesn't seem like harm has been done to any surrounding area's property. So I'm just wondering why this is such a big deal. Like because why perennial stream has 200 foot riverfront protection where you can't do anything unless you come before this board. Oh, I, I respect that. And, but and that's the whole thing. And then we review what it is they want to do and we can either give them a negative or a positive. So we can't, so you would have the power to say, this is fine, it's cleaned up, we're okay with it. In the future, we could maybe not do it that. It would be some sort, I mean, it depends on what they were planning on doing. I mean, this came to us where it had already been done. So we go out, we look, we see. It's just so right. weird that someone would complain three years later. Like, did, did someone I, have it out I, for them? I'm yeah. confused about where that's from. It was somebody <laughs> that uh, drove down the street it. that knew Jerry. Oh, okay. So And just happened to see it. Okay. So maybe they were, like, it must have been a sentimental, like, upset. Like, oh. I, I have no idea about okay. that. All I know is they said there was a pond there and it yeah. filled in. So. I mean, okay. complaints come in every single day. And I appreciate that. I just think in this case, I like, thinking it through rationally, like, I just don't see what, even having them have to pay for a wetland scientist, like what productive end is that going to have? That productive end would be the wetland scientist, instead of him having to put back exactly what was there, may have some mitigation that he could do instead that's not going to cost him a nominal end. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I want to see, because under the law, if <clears throat> there has been alteration to a wetland or a wetland buffer, it has to be fixed. There's no going beyond that law. It has to be restored. Now, in this case, the question is, was it a pond or was it man-made? Regardless of what it was, 
there was still work done it was functioning within the something. riverfront yeah. area. Yeah. And I know they call it riverfront and it's a stream, but that's right. they put that in. So the question is, and what I think a wetland scientist would be really good at, is looking at that area and saying, what's the best thing we can do for this area? Was there a pond? Did the soil indicate that there could have been a real pond there? Um, or do we just want to go ahead and figure out how we're going to um, restore some of that area back in a way, excuse me, that will make everybody happy? And the harm that we talk about is not always to the homeowner, the harm is to the environment and to the wetlands. And so when we talk about harm, the law is talking about wetlands and not, but we're also trying to not just harm the wetlands, we're also trying to make certain that people who own properties aren't going to get flooded, that sort of thing. So right. we're taking all of that into consideration. Right. I just, yeah, and that's why I met the previous situation sounded like there was harm to others' property in this situation. Yeah. I know maybe the environment is harmed. I don't see how that is happening personally, but when you get all the complaints that you say you get, do, do you ever say, like, we've looked into it, this was a violation, but it's not grievous enough to, to act on? Or well, you that's always why we want act? a professional to take a look oh, at Oh, okay. But that's not, the town doesn't pay for that? That has nope. to be on the homeowners? Yes. Right. I happen to have a printout of one of the things that we taught at the um, Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners. It says, what activities are prohibited in wetlands, riverfront areas, and other resource areas under the Massachusetts DEP Act? No one may remove, fill, dredge, or alter any wetland, floodplain, bank, land underwater body, land within 100 feet of a wetland, or land within 200 feet of a perennial stream or river. And, I mean, again. Oh, I'm not questioning you're right. Yeah. I, I completely um, hear and so appreciate the right that so, you uh, have. So, assuming I there wasn't even a pond there, yeah. okay, if he wanted to bring Phil in there to fill in his yacht, that's within 200 feet. He has to come before okay. us. The pond is kind of secondary right. at this point. Okay. Because he brought Phil in within 200 feet of that river. Right. And when you bring Phil in and you park vehicles there, I mean, the drainage from the dirt, it drains into that stream. That stream ties into the Shudamatuska Camp River. Shudamatuska Camp goes down through Island Grove, goes by the Meyer Street Wells, which is where um, Potter Babington pulls their water supplies from. So again, you know, this is how and why streams are important, wetlands are important. Right. right. And, and you might say, oh, well, you know, that's only one truck here. But, no, you know, if you I got understand. everybody doing it, I understand then that. there's a problem. I and that's that. why there's laws that need to be followed. Okay. But by hiring a wetland scientist, wetland engineer, it may be beneficial to him in the long run. Okay. They may come to us with a plan that's acceptable. Is there a certain um, period of time that Yes, I think we gave. We until gave them until August, October. October first okay. is oh. what we did to have the plan. Does he have to move the fence to that he made? Uh, he's going to have to. That'll all be part of the plan with the wetland scientists. Okay. He was just he just spoke because the kids were coming from school. Yeah. Well, that's school. all part of the same okay. thing. And what's the appeal process? I saw that there was like a place that if they choose to, they could appeal it. Is that is that something they'd have to get a lawyer and then appeal through that? They you would can't they appeal would an enforcement order. Yeah. You have to go to court. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. So you could go to court. So there you, you could, could go, go to, to the court. superior court. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's just be very, very hard. And expensive. Inexpensive. Because, quite frankly, the court's going to say kick it back to conservation, the DEP, because you are within 200 feet of the river, and that's the law. I see. Yep. Okay. So, I'm just curious. So. All right. Thank you very she much. She has a question. Oh, oh no, no question. Okay. Eu queria saber, questionar, o porquê que a conservação foi lá agora que está limpo, e quando estava sujo, ferro jogado, lata, roupa, sapato, chinelo, a água sobe, sobe, chinelo, sobe, garrafa, roupa, tem vaso sanitário jogado atrás da seca, por que que agora que está limpo, foram lá, mas quando estava sujo, não foram. She wants to know when it's all clean now, people came and complained, which is all clean, but when it was dirty, nobody said anything, there was clothes, there were um, different toilets, there were um, 
a lot of like material, like old stuff, like like there was um, when it rains, yeah, when it rains, just like autumn. I mean, the property is beautiful. We were out there, we walked it. It is a beautiful piece of property, and your landscaping is lovely, and your hardscaping is beautiful. But it's just that anything that you do near that stream is regulated, and you need to come before us before doing anything. Yeah. Okay. okay. Eu concordo. Eu concordo de fazer o o lado. Uma coisa que não é que Eu vim aqui, Jeca, se era permitido fazer a cerca. Eu vim aqui, Jeca. Ele falou que não precisava de permissão. Eu vim pegar. Ele falou não precisa. When did you put the fence up? When? Um, Foi ano passado. Last year. Outubro. Last year? Yeah, October. Yes. Because that she, she came here to say she needs a, a Eu não permission. Fiz antes de vir aqui. Yeah. They said they didn't need a permission to make. To right. Make but unfortunately, I mean, I, I can't speak for other departments, but we've had some changeovers in the building department that would oversee fencing. Mm -hmm. And you, that's where you would go and ask if you could put a fence up. and. You know, had due diligence been done, and they said, "Oh, there's a wetlands here. You got to go to conservation." That's the way it's supposed oh, it's to work. They it. should have told you that. And they did not tell you that. that. Those, the, the people that were in the building office at that time are no longer with the town. Correct. Oh, okay. okay. So, and the building department will be notified tomorrow, so they know this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which I think Jason and uh, Nick know this. You're gonna do that. I'll, I'll call Jason. Ah, não posso só isolar aquela área. She said, she said, uh, if she can just close the area and not just put anything there, she can't do that. She needs to hire a engineering. It's, it's a wetland scientist, and they're going to come in, they're going to know exactly why we called them in, they're going to look at it, and they're going to come up with a solution to how we can solve this problem without putting pawns back or whatever. They will be the experts who will advise them how to do okay. it. Okay. O esgoto não, não prejudicava, não, porque aquilo era um esgoto. Eu não sei se você está aqui. 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 Eu não sei There's little bridges that go across this yeah, river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of dumping of grass clippings and stuff. That's kind of like not a good we thing. We stopped that wedding. All right. Thank oh, you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. What's that? There's nothing wrong with the bridge. It's just that on the other side of their property, I guess they own on the other side of the stream, and they were throwing grass clippings, Christmas trees. No, I get that. They get the high school. The kids from all the rubbish. And and thank you for bringing that to us attention because you know somebody needs to go out there and clean it up whether it's oh, yeah, school. Oh kids, a lot of kids. Um, yeah, they, they walk. Again, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's and why they made the fence because they were walking by the house all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I and I can understand thing. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. It's garbage can. Huh? Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So. I'm hot. <laughs> I know we're almost done. We're right. almost done. I'm gonna bump up um, the update or the amended enforcement order for 1212 Bedford Street and/or 3 Highland Road. 
Um, Mrs. Reed. Mrs. Reed. Do you want to come up to the podium? Vehicles. Introduce yourself. Elizabeth Reed, um, 26 Island Road, Abington. Um, the vehicles have been moved off the property. Okay. And the boat, there was a boat on there too that was all moved off. It's just been cleared. There's nothing. The mulch piles are still there. They're still right. there. Okay. Other than that, nothing. So at this point, you know, there's not much we can do with that. We gave them an order mm -hmm. and a deadline, mm -hmm. and there's nothing we can do until that deadline gets here. And August 15th. August yeah. 15th. Yeah. And then, well, we have a meeting on the 13th, so it would be the next meeting. When is that? I don't know. August. Um, I have no math today. That's okay. I have it right here. Does 1200 have an order as well? Or? 1200 is on the agenda. He's separate though. Um, oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, and the 13th is, um, so the 27th. So he needs to have that plan to us. presented to us August on the 27th. 27th. And July I have not 27th? heard from what, hmm? what so date? August, August 27th. He needs to have his representative here presenting a plan does he know that date he knows it's in the order yeah. that was that i amended or we amended the sorry order. yeah um that we amended and that i know you got a copy of that right yes and so it was also sent to him and um, his representative so his job right now is to find someone to come in they're gonna have to move those piles to do the delineation and he has to present it to us at in August, um, the next meeting after the 15th. And if he does not, we will discuss, take it from there. Take it from there. Yeah. So when's the next meeting to discuss this? Um, well, we'll keep this on the agenda because if anything comes up, I want this to be on the agenda so we can discuss it. Um, next meeting is with the 23rd, um, and then the one after that is the 13th. So three meetings from now is when this should come should come up. Um, but we have to leave it on the agenda in case right. something okay. yeah. comes up so we can discuss it. You know, if something happens and they're doing something, you know, just let me know. We'll, we'll talk about it at that next meeting. But that's the timeline as it stands right now is... It, that those plans need to be given to us by the 15th. We will look them over and then discuss on the 23rd, but 27th? 27th. 27th, thank you. And they will be discussed at the meeting. And then he has to get the work done by, we say October 1st? I or think 15th? October. Sometime October. in October. I think That's, it's October 15th, August 15th. Yeah, we gave them until then because there's going to be plantings involved and it's much better to, you know. That's assuming it. he responds to us by the 15th. Yeah. That's, that's ideal. There are ways if there's not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Thank you. I'm sorry thank for the, the heat and thank you for waiting so long. So there's nothing new on Hanson Tree? Nothing new on Hanson Tree. Okay. Um, Again, I, let's keep that on the agenda. I don't recall if we gave them a deadline. I thought we did. I thought we did. Yeah. I thought we did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It might be in here somewhere. But I would like to... It's I haven't heard anything days, right? okay. from them. And Paul was handling a lot of the communication, but I'll... Well, we also just go through with the 4th of July, so people could have been away, so, you know, I mean, people take vacations. So. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it will just stay on the agenda. Okay, yeah. All right, so 1200 Bedford Street, Matthew McPhail. So nobody's here. He um, to show. He don't show the last one. I sent a little bit more of a strongly worded a letter um but i made a mistake on it and i told him we expected him to show up on tuesday july 11th uh. yeah uh -oh. so i asked um, nancy if she could call him 
found a phone number. I don't know. She got a hold of him. So we have. I have not heard anything from this person, this property owner. So I'd like to um, discuss what we will do if they do not show up at the next meeting. We're asking him to come before us and chit chat. And if he doesn't show up, then I, I would say if he's in violation of wetlands. Would that not be an enforcement order? Yeah, so um, have Nancy get in touch with him. And um, by phone call, someone, I mean, it's East and Cedar, so. Yeah. Someone should be able to get in touch with him. I don't have a phone number. I haven't done business with him. But um, tell him we want him at the next meeting. If he doesn't, then we'll issue an enforcement order that mm -hmm. night. There's two things going on there. One is that the wetland that overlaps onto Highland Road right. 1212. Mm -hmm. There's also an area farther back where they've encroached into the wetland, completely cleared out the buffer. Hmm. They've got something going on there. See, you can go on Mass Map, or it's been going on for like they three or four store years. They were storing firewood back then. Yeah, yeah. It's behind the kindergarten, yeah. the daycare. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you go and look at the aerial photography, I think starting in 2019 or something, and you can just, I don't know, John, if you know how to, or even Justin, if you know how to do the aerial photography, we can show mm -hmm. you, or give you directions for it, but you can just see over time stuff that's happening, and you can see encroachment slowly <coughs> until now they're, they've got stuff parked within. Well, maybe well. when, when um, Tony's back among us that evening she can bring her laptop and we can pull up mass mapper and show the imagery we'll show everything up there yeah how yeah. Goes back mm. and how we go in and we yeah that would be a good idea things. see how it was yeah. years ago compared to now Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really neat it's very, it's very neat. neat i mean our circuit writer went through this with us and showed us how to do it it's like wow i've never it's knew pretty cool yeah it is very cool so okay. then we'll have to figure out what to do in that case because do we want them to hire a different wetland scientist for the same wetland that overlaps on 1212 and 26 Highland Road. I would think it would behoove him to show up and then look it up. It would behoove him, but he's also going to need to have somebody to deal with the back area behind the daycare. There's two separate things there. Is it the same business owner for the daycare and whatever's going on in the back? Yeah, same yeah. property okay. owner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a business I, I don't know if there. he rents out the daycare okay. or not. Yeah. So he he sold the pieces of land that directly abut the Reed's property that are that have been worked on. That whole eighty one A, eighty one B thing that I kept trying to drive into people's heads <laughs> during that presentation that it was originally his property that he then sold to Mr. Deandra and is the subject of a lot of the issues that are going on at um, 26 Highland. He also has that pond there that seems to have been filled in mm -hmm. over the decades or over a decade or I should say over the course of the decade because it has been ongoing. Is it filled in or is it just that there's no more water feeding it because it's uh, been filled in on the other side of the property there? It looked to me like on one of the photos there was a big pile of dirt right up against it. Oh, okay. okay. So It's hard to tell when you're looking at it from the road. It just looks like vegetation. Like yeah. you can't really see mm -hmm. any pond or wetland. Like it's not, it doesn't look wet. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But if you're um, looking, okay. I don't think. Okay, go ahead. We don't have anything to hold on. All right. Um, so feel free. All right. Well, we can just wrap this. Yeah, up. Yeah, we uh, can wrap it up. <laughs> so uh, the no news on North Quincy Street. Nothing on North Quincy. And nothing on. on Rockton Ave. I've been by there several times. They're not doing anything there. They've cleaned it up, and. Um, so there's a gate there on the French that locks so well, so. Do you need help, Jean? I think I'll make it to the ladies' room. It's this week. I can't wait. Yeah. Top. All right. And then the only thing left is building permits. Um, you have a question? Can I just partially speak to one Oh, yeah. Sure. sure. Come, yeah. Up, yeah. come up to the podium again. Oh, okay. Can you repeat that? But that's where 
the water from our property is supposed to go to that pond. Right. Right. And he's dammed it. That's the pond between the yep. two properties. It's on 1200. Yeah. 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 So both both property owners there have an interest in that property sort of no longer being a pond, right? Okay. Well, Mr. DeAndre did all the work, but Mr. McPhail allowed him to. Yeah. On his property. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the case, if they were working together, they should have no trouble finding a wetland scientist to go. Yeah. Mm. You can split the cost. But yeah, just the, um, John, I sent you the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I yes, yes, sure yes. You didn't go through it. <laughs> it's a lot. I was going to have my phone, but then yeah. I went to my I laptop know, and it was, a, it was a little more. Uh, there was stormwater pipe mm -hmm. that went, there's a, a stream that goes back there. And then the pipe was going into this pond that's on 1200. And then that was piped out underneath Route 18. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> and then when Route 18 got expanded, the state went, "What is this?" Mm. So oh, so when, when, when they widened the roads, they yeah, kind of noticed it then. Yeah. That. Sorry, but you can see over the years, that's coming. Mm. We are almost done. Okay. Motion so to. No, no, oh, no, no, sorry. Sidewalk, 937 Plymouth Street, Dog Park. Sorry. Oh yeah. Four of us mm. went there. Okay. Um, those complaint about dying trees based on the dog park. Um, the trees that we saw were not dying on the abutters property. There are trees, definitely, but they're like in a row right at the backyard. So it's like 400 yeah. something feet away from the dog park. Not only that, I went into. So it's uh, probably not dog, dog urine. It's not right. dog urine. No. I went and got a topography. Right map. around the right around the area, obviously, everything seems to be fine hmm. within 10, 15, 20 feet of the dog park until we went to her backyard. Uh, we couldn't actually go right where it was, but she said there was a spot like in the middle that used to be a lot of trees, but there's still trees behind it and in front of it. And right at the Do Abington Dog Park, everything looked, they didn't look like there was a lot of uh, decay and dying. Yeah, it looked healthy it there. It looked really, really healthy. Yeah, it looked uh, like it was, yeah, 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 it was yeah, definitely do. thriving. Um, there's a topography map that I found, and I found that her property is actually 60 feet upland. So if anything did come from mm -hmm. the dog park, it wouldn't have crawled up her it property. Would have yeah, I don't see how it could I mean, be possible. It's not possible. Um, did she ever send us any survey? She said she was going to send us some she stuff. She said she was. Um, I haven't heard anything from Nancy. This is actually a picture that I took. I sent to Nancy, but you can see this is her backyard, mm -hmm. and there's this line right here. These are all bushes. Mm-hmm. And it's just this one, the section right here, it's close to her lawn, yep. just dying trees. Hmm. So it's a little strange that it's just like tree, you know. It's like kind of like right place. in the middle, like a little spot. And yeah. So it's like, is it disease or something? Disease. Like, yeah. it could be I don't know. Mm. I mean, we did have a drought period of how many years we had sure. water bands and everything else. So, right. but you could say, you know, well, then why isn't it more random? Right. right. Mm. Again, I mean, if she really wants to know, she can have a, a, an arborist come in and check the ground around the trees. It could be um, surface water from, yeah. absolutely. Um, it could be surface water coming in from Route 58 that funnels down from the backyard. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sorry, I'm just feeling very sick sure. right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we'll go ahead and um, finish this up. So I think that's it. I'll just, I'll contact her and ask her to hire somebody and see if they can figure out there's disease going on Some, it's there's definitely not the dog park there. there's something happening yeah. there hmm. but it's just i don't think it's related to the right. dog park i think we also pointed out the fact that when we had the mass mapper map that the trees that are being cut were not coming from the property that she thought it was but actually there's another property that comes down and goes right along the rental hers. place there yeah, the yeah. good so, develop I mean, colonial development something like that that yeah. might be something to look at on mass mapper to see if there's any been any recent activity or google earth even um oh, i'm just like i didn't I really no i'm almost I'm thinking, bad i think that's Sorry. it so i will yeah i'll contact her and ask her to do all these things um we were supposed to have meeting minutes. They are not here. Let's go we on. should, um, for our next meeting, see if the AC is working downstairs, or maybe okay. meet one of the smaller rooms yeah. downstairs. Mm -hmm. yeah.
I mean, you younger people can deal with it better than I can. I'm like, no, I, I think it'd be for the benefit of everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, I'd be fine. I work outside. Downstairs. I was supposed to go back to you. <laughs> yeah. I can handle the heat. I, I can't. I, and a lot of people can't. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is um, please, I want to put a thing on the agenda next time for ideas that people have for things. Okay. There's one thing um, we need to get on that certificates of compliances backlog that we have, um, but I have some other ideas. So if you guys have things that you would like to see done with PSAs. the PSAs, huh? right. we got to tell people they can't. I mess think with we need to do a cable show or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, hey, this is do's and don'ts of property owning. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people that don't, you know, buy property for the first time. On your property, hmm. there are still laws that apply. Right, and there a needs lot of people to be. Don't. We need service. to do a yeah. public service announcement mm. and right. uh, get Kevin to keep running it. There's even brochures that you can mm. buy from MACC, and I forget how many you can get, 200 for like, I don't know, 30 bucks. You can mail them out to people in the general areas that have... Well, the other thing we could do with that is maybe we could um, get some of those, and next time the town mails out, you know, uh, tax bills. Tax bills. Yeah, it's play with it. Yeah, tax bills. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Friendly reminder or something yeah. like that. Put yeah. something on right. a web page, internet, yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, different reminders. Yeah, those are all good, good ideas. Um, so we should like to talk about those. Have something yeah. on the agenda to talk mm. about all those things. Um, so just put that on the agenda for next time. We'll yeah. discuss. Uh, all kinds and of if ideas. If we can't get the AC fixed and we can't get another room, I'm, I will remote in. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll get another. We could all yeah. remote in. Mm. We could all remote yeah. in. That's what we can do. You have access mm -hmm. to a computer. Okay. Yeah, I've done it before. So if everybody has access to a computer and they yep. haven't figured this out, well, Scott just it. said this isn't going to be fixed till September. Yeah, well. Oh, but well. I think it's only the just upstairs. Time for the, the, yeah. the yeah. office has it, and downstairs has AC because. Barbara. Maybe he'll let us use his office. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Okay. Lower levels will definitely be cooler, well, anyways. Just open the door for yeah. his office so we can get a cool yeah. breeze. But I mean, I'm sorry. But I think if the small rooms downstairs have AC, then we yeah. could do it in there. Okay. Yeah. And if that doors, doesn't work, then we'll just zoom. We'll it. go to the public library. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there are some places that do that. They go yeah. to their high mm. school public library. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Auditorium. I'm just. I'll find out tomorrow um, about the AC in the building. Congratulations, Lynn and Alex. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Motion to adjourn. Hope we can do that. Second. I shall relinquish my seat next to. We got a vote, all right? We All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 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 That's happening. We're joining. Okay, we're good.